Nominations for this award come from students and faculty. She or he has made more than a positive impact, is motivated and inspires all students to do their best. A student says, I believe she or he is more than qualified for this award and is devoted to MCCC. Many students said, this is the most helpful and comprehensive professor I have ever had. He or she really cares about the progress of students and would do anything humanly possible to help them succeed. Because of his or her outstanding teaching abilities, he or she touched our lives and as a result prepares us to tackle obstacles in public. This faculty member has a great connection with students and makes class fun and interesting. She or he always has the door open to students and students feel respected. He or she is simply amazing, easygoing but a stern teacher and very down to earth. He or she is smart, funny, even hysterical, informing, creative, supportive, and very likable, very cheerful, and full of energy. She or he motivates students to think outside the box and also makes certain that important items are covered thoroughly. Faculty comment that this person is very student-centered, imaginative, creative, lively, upbeat, positive, a good influence on faculty and students. One of the most loved and respected professors on this campus. Very dedicated to student success. She or he leads college committees and always has a positive approach. Faculty and students are very clear that this person loves what he or she does teaching and creating opportunities for students. They also agree that this faculty member shows great leadership and teaching abilities, a truly excellent professor. She or he has a way of educating students by allowing them to participate while instilling self-confidence in everything they do. This faculty member leads students in community service with preschool and elementary students, practice in giving back to the community. She has done a terrific job with MouthWorks. Please welcome to the podium and congratulate this year's distinguished teacher, Kathy Peluccio. All right, settle down. <laughs> oh my goodness, I dropped my speech. I really did. I have to look for it. Okay. You have it? S have a student run it up. That was not planned. <laughs> Good afternoon. I want to extend my thanks to the faculty for their mentorship throughout the years. 
There is nothing that I have ever done in this campus that would have been possible without that kind of mentoring, so I thank them. I want to thank the members of the award committee, our administrators, our staff, our board of trustees, but mostly I want to thank the students. I suppose this is some sort of a payback for all the speeches I made you do, right? <sighs> when you are given such an honor and you are told that you have to say something really important in front of this many people on their very important day, and when your supervisors are all around, and when you know it's going to be filmed, and it just so happens that the mayor of Newark is sitting right behind you, <laughs> there is an awful lot of pressure that comes to bear. Who's that, Kenny? <laughs> ditto, Kenny, ditto. But that pressure becomes magically doubled when it just so happens that you're the public speaking instructor on the campus. <laughs> so I was really trying to think of something good to, to say to you. And I was remembering my graduation and thinking about when I was where you are now. And the first thing that I thought of, in fact, the only thing I could think of was that I remember being really annoyed. Now, I'm Italian and I annoy easily, but these two things I want to share. First, the graduation hat was not sitting on my head well. It looked good on my friends' heads, and it looks great on your head, but it wasn't working for me. And my friends were swarming around me with a bunch of strategically placed bobby pins, but it was an epic fail, and I went hatless. But the other thing that I was annoyed about, and this has a little more bite, is that I found everyone saying the same thing to me over and over again. Now, the first part of what they were saying was great. They were saying, Congratulations, shook my hand, congratulations, big hug, that part was fine. It was the set of words that immediately followed that that was driving me nuts, and it took the following forms. Congratulations, so what are you going to do now? <laughs> congratulations, so what's the plan? Congratulations, so you got a job, you're going to a school, what, you know, what do you have lined up? And it seemed impossible for anyone to say the word congratulations without then immediately demanding of me the itinerary for the rest of my life. Now, my face didn't show how upset I was. I would smile and try to feel good. But I was thinking, what? What? Next? I just, did you see what I just did? The diploma's not even in the mail yet. Are you kidding me? Do you know how many 10-page papers I just wrote at 4 o'clock in the morning? Who even knows what I wrote in some of those papers? And, and those of you who are here today who somehow managed to complete the degree in the amount of time that's stated by the catalog, I really applaud you. That's pretty amazing. But a lot of us were on a kind of another plan, right? The three-year plan, the four-year plan. Raise your hand if it applies to you. Six, seven. Maybe you took a little break in between. So I'm talking about years. And I, I was thinking to myself, well, could I just maybe have 10 minutes to just bask in the miracle that I pulled this off at all. I couldn't understand why anyone would say that to a student. And then last week, I was talking to a communication major, and I congratulated her, and I said the same thing to her. I couldn't believe it came out of my mouth, and so I thought long and hard about what compels us to say that to people. And I think you need to know, because someone is going to say it to you if they haven't already. So the answer is this. I believe that all of you here today are like this amazing adventure story. You're like a novel. And we are all so floored, the faculty especially, because you tell us everything about your lives. We are floored about the amount of challenges that you face and you live to. And let me tell you that my life pales in comparison to yours. It pales. It's boring. You are like this great story with all of these chapters. So I wrote a couple titles of your chapters down. And if they apply to you, feel free to respond. Uh, now, chapter one was a little dry, right? You got here, you didn't really know what was going on. But then the chapters really pick up fast because stuff keeps happening to you, and somehow you make it through. So chapter three, you find romance, and romance stomps on your heart. The next semester, chapter four, stolen textbooks never recovered. 
Chapter 5, Romance from Chapter 3 returns and becomes Stalker. <laughs> if you were a stalker, that chapter does not apply to you. <laughs> chapter 6, we'll call Major Transportation Nightmares. <laughs> chapter 7, we call Quitting Your Job, Inflexible Employers, Finding a Job, or Working Three Jobs. Chapter 8, we call Mysterious or Random Medical Condition that keeps you from coming to class, for which you can provide documentation. <laughs> chapter 9 was interesting. That was the teacher who only believed in C's. You were very upset about that. Yeah. Chapter 9, the stalker returns. You have to change your cell phone number. There are so many chapters that we all have in common. But what's amazing is that none of this is fiction. It's all absolutely true. It all happened to you, and it is awe-inspiring that you were able to work through it and that you made it to this point. Not everybody can do that. Teaching is a wonderful job, but it can also be very sad right about now because just when your story is starting to get good, somebody comes out and rips the story right out of, ha out of your hand and you go, which is what ha is happening today. So when people ask you what your plans are, don't get annoyed like I did. Know this, that they are actually paying you the ultimate compliment. It's not about what you haven't done yet. It's because they have seen your chapters and it has been one hell of a ride and you pulled it off and they just want to see maybe just a hint of what your next chapters are going to be. I cannot speak for everyone here, but I can speak for faculty when I say that every single person here dressed in black is so extremely thrilled for every single person dressed in green. And we don't need to know you to be thrilled for you. And we hope that one day you will make time to come back and tell us the rest of your story. We kind of think we're entitled to it, actually. We are so proud of you. Congratulations. So what are you going to do next? Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and congratulations on a great story about stories.